Uh, hi everyone. Uh, this I'm going to talk about the implementing confidential assets uh, in uh, Zano and uh, uh, co what confidential asset basically is. It's just a tokens that we can deploy and transfer in an anonymous way. So, like that's that's what what my presentation about. And I'm I'm sorry it's uh, going to be a little bit technical. Uh, so, well, in brief introduction, my name is Val. My, uh, I also may be known as uh, CryptoSoul. I'm lead researcher at Zano, and also I'm author of Zerkenum. Uh, last year, together with Core, the uh, developer of Monero, we presented uh, this Zerkenum uh, at MoneroCon and previously at Monerotopia. Um, so. What was the uh, motivation? Stepping back over a year and a half, uh, what we had at Zano, at, we had a uh, crypto node base, L1 blockchain, proof of work, and proof of stake uh, hybrid consensus. We had Zerkanum, this private proof of stake concept implemented in testnet. And we will be uh, was ready to implement it in the mainnet, and at that point we thought that maybe it uh, will be interesting to implement in multi assets on our blockchain. So uh, we uh, started to explore this field, and we basically we wanted uh, to implement multi asset support, of course, with a hidden amount, and maybe also uh, with. A hidden asset type, so the external observer can guess what assets are being transferred. And uh, also, we would like to have a uh, unified anonymity pool for of all our outputs in the blockchain, so we don't end up with a situation when we have uh, one output for one asset, one output for another asset, and another set of outputs for staking, for, for instance. So we would like to have it unified. Um, and um, we uh, actually found that quite quite a few work actually uh, were made on this field. You you can see it's quite quite an effort. Uh, here I would like to mention uh, some work. It's first of all it's confidential assets by Andrew Pearl, Stradenbeck, Mike Fadenberg, Gregory Maxwell, and Peter Willey. In 2017, uh, the concept was introduced, and later it was, I believe, it was implemented, and it was a paper called "Liquid a Bitcoin Sidechain" by Jonas Nick, Andrew Pelser, and Gregory Sanders. Uh, so these uh, two works, are, uh, as I, as far as I know, from guys from uh, from persons and researchers from uh, Blockstream company. Um, then it was a paper called Lantos CLA by Pyrrhus Chidas and Vladislav Gelfer, uh, which more uh, improved this concept. And also I would like to mention the SPATS confidential assets and non-fungible tokens by Aaron and Aram that was uh, also presented last year on the ManerCon. And uh, uh, two days ago we saw a nice presentation of Bulletproof++ by Liam. Uh, uh, this is... Uh, as far as I know, work again by people uh, from Blockstream and related to Blockstream. Uh, so quite quite a few effort on this field. And actually, funny enough, uh, when we first started to um, thinking over how we could implement confidential asset uh, in Zano, we came up with two ideas how this could be done. And later, funny, uh, we find out that both of these ideas are more or less um, uh, presented by um, uh, researchers uh, in different work. So we like we, we stick to one. Uh, this is um, our approach, mostly uh, following the approach by uh, confidential assets by Andrew Pearlstrom. So I would like to uh, go. Uh, 
before I go uh, deep into the details, how we actually implement it and uh, which challenges we face it. I would like to very briefly <clears throat> recall how uh, uh, actually crypto node, classic crypto node and ring confidential transactions look like. And after that, I'm going to show what changes we made to make it compatible with confidential assets. So in crypto, classical crypto node, we have just a plain amount A uh, with no hidden. It's put, it, it is put on the output and every everyone can see it on the ring confidential transaction we have a uh, amount commitment output are not uh, seen by everyone uh, anymore and it it is committed to a Pedersen commitment using uh, randomness uh, F and uh, here is the amount a that we have uh, and uh, what uh, basic idea that we have for confidential asset is that we use different generators for amounts for different type of assets so this is like very basic concept and uh, instead of uh, providing the uh, the asset type actually asset generator that we use for this concrete output we uh, have to hide this using another commitment uh, in using another out, uh, randomness, different randomness error. So basically, we have a generator that is uh, its so-called asset tag. In one uh, work, in another work, it called asset uh, ID, I believe. And here uh, we have a commitment to an asset, uh, or I'm sorry, we have a commitment to an asset, and also it is called a um, blinded asset tag. So external observer cannot guess, looking at this output, cannot guess what actually uh, type of asset uh, being transferred. This very basic idea. So now I would like to uh, consider the transaction structure of crypto node and uh, ring CT. So in uh, crypto node, we have uh, just a plain, this uh, very simple transaction structure, we have one input, one output. For uh, each of output, we have only stealth address and plain output, uh, plain amount uh, placed here. And for one input, we have here uh, input referring to a set of uh, another output that is known as the decoy set. Only one of each is actually being spent. Uh, some of like using index pi and uh, external observer cannot cannot tell cannot guess which one actually being spent but for sure sender of the transaction knows it he uh, he knows or she knows uh, the secret I'm sorry uh, secret for secret part for stealth address and also uh, the, so only we need to do to implement this approach is to use a classic ring signature uh, to um, proof and zero knowledge that to proof and zero zero knowledge that uh, we uh, actually know the secret part for one of the output referring here. In real world, of course, we have uh, a transaction with several input and several output, and base uh, balance proof can be done very easily, very natively by just summing amounts on the input side and output side and making sure that we are not creating any new coins. When uh, Ring CT came up, uh, outputs does not contain, outputs don't, don't contain plain explicit amounts anymore. Instead, it contains uh, amount commitment. And this amount commitment uh, Else, they this put in a, each output, and here we have the same transaction structure as before. One input referring to a set of outputs, only one of uh, each is being actually spent, and sender knows all secret part for uh, stealth address and for amount commitment. He knows uh, amount A, and he knows randomness F that was used. And uh, uh, unfortunately, this amount commitment can be used in uh, other proofs in this transaction because uh, it will immediately be clear which output actually are used here if we use like this amount commitment. So there, um, to overcome this difficulty, Ring CT 
use approach called pseudo output commitment. So we just generate another commitment to the very same amount A that we have uh, uh, in this in this input, but using different randomness. And this amount commitments are put in the transaction data plainly, and this amount commitment are used subsequently in in proofs. And to uh, to do this possible, we only need to add another layer to the ring signature. It's very important that we don't use uh, another ring signature, but we use another layer of the existing ring signature because we need to prove in uh, zero knowledge that uh, for very same index pi, uh, uh, secret index pi, one of the output here have uh, have Stealth address and amount commitment that satisfy this equation. So basically, sender knows for some output knows secret part for all of them, but nobody knows for which which one. Uh, and of course, in real world situation, we have a uh, few outputs and few inputs. And uh, due to the thanks to the homomorphic property of uh, Pedersen commitment, we can sum up the commitments instead of summing out the amount itself. Uh, and of course, we need to account for fee. Fee in uh, case of the ring CT uh, should be placed explicitly in the transaction extra, I believe. Uh, and we should account for uh, old outputs from the previous era that it was generated like years ago and still using plain outputs. Now, uh, I would like to show uh, what changes we made. So all, all that I said before is what actually ring signature, uh, ring CT looks like, and it's used uh, in Monero at that point, point. And now I would like to show what changes we made to uh, make uh, confidential asset possible in this scheme. So uh, here, basically, we, for each output, we, along with uh, output commitment, we need to, uh, put a uh, asset commitment, and uh, so this st structure pretty much the same. Only change we need here is that we need to uh, generate another pseudo output commitment to an asset that is actually used. And <clears throat> here we have third layer of the ring signature because we need to prove in zero knowledge that this uh, that the sender of the transaction actually knows all this secret data and this pseudo output commitment are well formed and uh, here we have a challenge because uh, we can't use classical CLSAC approach here because we have three layers and two different generators here we could use MLSAC for instance but we decided that we rather try to modify existing CLSAC scheme because of effectiveness. And we uh, we did it, we came up with a uh, scheme that's called DV CLSAC. This is just an extension that allows uh, to use different generators uh, in CLSAC. And this paper is published and I'm very grateful to CypherStack and Aaron for reviewing it. Um, yeah, as before, we have in real world situation, we have several inputs, several outputs, and we still uh, can uh, check balance by uh, sum all the commitments, output commitments on the input side and on the output side. And as before, we need to account for a fee, and as before, we need to account for very old outputs with explicit amounts that was uh, in existence like years before. In Zano, we have plenty of them. Um, yes, and here we have a kind of kind of problem because uh, we need to somehow make make sure that these output commitments in the outputs are well formed, because we uh, basically in ring signature in ring CT we have uh, range proofs that make sure that I'm sorry that makes hmm, that make sure that oh it works that makes sure that uh, all these output commitments are well formed. And for uh, asset commitment, we actually need so-called assets rejection proof. 
because otherwise uh, an attacker would use um, malicious uh, generator over here and will be able to generate coins out of thin air. So basically we need to prove in zero knowledge, of course, that for each output the uh, generator that used for asset here corresponds to one of the input. It could be done by using a just plain ring signature as it was proposed by the uh, original work confidential asset by um, Andrew Palestra et al. And uh, we decided to try different approach, uh, more effective space-wise, and we ended up actually implementing an a one out of n modification of the algorithmic membership proof that was like introduced and discussed and improved in series of works. And here I'm showing three, three papers that we actually used. Unfortunately, uh, I didn't uh, find a single paper that actually have all these improvements in a one single space because it would be very convenient and I'm actually I'm thinking about maybe writing such a paper because it would be would be convenient for other. So we ended up using algorithmic uh, one out of hand proof uh, that space-wise has size of four logarithm m plus four elements. Um, also, there is a uh, mm, there, there's another challenge using uh, range proofs in, in such a transaction scheme. Uh, it makes it un for us impossible to use bullet, uh, range proof aggregation because bulletproof plus and bulletproof very conveniently uh, provides an aggregation. So you can use not one range proof for each output. You can use combine it all together and provide only one proof per transaction. It saves lots of data. And here we have a difficulty because uh, uh, this approach requires using a constant generator for amount and for randomness. And here our approach don't allow this. To overcome this difficulty, we uh, decided to uh, provide additional, for each output, provide additional commitment using the Another fixed generator U, uh, that is, have no efficiently computable logarithmic relation with all other generator, of course. And, uh, uh, yeah, we, we could prove in zero knowledge very easily that they, they, these commitments are committed to this very same amount. And then after that we can use a range proof aggregation. So we save a lot of data using this approach. Um, okay, so... Um, here we discuss it, uh, basically a transaction structure that allows to transfer confiden uh, confidential asset from one user to another user. Uh, and we made sure that no coins are generated out of thin air, but how asset could be uh, uh, emitted in the first place. And we done this by publishing a special structure in publicly in a blockchain. For instance, if I would like to emit an asset, I register this asset. I put a special data structure, we call it asset descriptor, pull the ticker name, uh, supply, the small point, all the all the necessary information. This uh, and also I put the public key uh, that will in future allow to control the asset. All this data is being hashed and uh, we uh, at the end, we have a random elliptic curve point that is will be used as a amount generator, asset tag, so called. And when each time <clears throat> when I, as an asset owner, uh, need to emit asset or burn publicly burn asset or to modify kind of metadata, I need to provide a ownership proof. And um, uh, returning back to the transaction scheme that we that we considered. So all we need to do is to put uh, this information to the transaction extra along with uh, uh, amount commitment that it used to emit an asset and to account it in balance proof equation over there. So, and this works. A uh, few words about Ionic swaps. Uh, this is concept that uh, I think dates back to the 2013 uh, to coin join idea by Gregory Maxwell uh, that basically consists of that one user can create a partially 
signature transaction and pass it to another user who will complete the transaction and after that this transaction will be broadcasted. So <clears throat> conveniently enough this approach with, uh, with confidential assets allows to uh, instantly swapping asset between users. For instance, this in this example, Alice would like to swap the orange asset, let's call it that, to uh, uh, violet asset and she creates a partially uh, uh, partial transaction that only has an input that she has an output that she would like to receive and that this transaction uh, is being sent to the Bob, for instance, who would like to interact with Alice and to change this asset. And Bob completes the transaction by providing the inputs for the uh, required outputs over there and outputs for himself. So now this transaction is complete, could be broadcasted, and very easily and conveniently, uh, two persons could instantly exchange the asset uh, entirely on the blockchain in a private way. That's important because external observer couldn't guess what actual asset type are being used here and being exchanged. Uh, and uh, like just a few words about the Zircanum. Uh, we, when we implemented all that I told before, we came up with a, another challenge that we don't like user to stake uh, asset instead of native coins. We would like them to only state native, stake native coins. And uh, Zircanum uh, transaction scheme was developed way before we came up with a confidential asset solution, so we need uh, somehow to integrate one with another. And this is how we did it. I won't uh, go into the details about how Zircanum worked, but what we see here is just a uh, uh, proof of stake mining transaction and Zircanum requires uh, an additional commitment to be put in each output and additional pseudo output commitments to, to, to put over there. So we just ended up with adding two layers for the ring signature and now we for Zircanum mining transaction we are using 5 slash 2 CL sac because it's 5 layers and only two distinct generators here is used. And uh, mm, yeah, it works, it works, but like we have uh, interesting, very interesting like anonymity issue because as I said before, uh, on the transaction we, we have this blinded asset types, asset types. So external observer cannot say which actually asset are hidden over there, so we, we, we don't, don't know. Is it native coins or like USDT or rapid Bitcoin? But in this particular transaction, on the left side, on the input side, we have only native coins, obviously, because we could only stake native coins. And on the, on the output side, we have like potentially hidden assets, but in this situation, it's obvious that all these hidden assets would be native coins because if you have only native coins on inputs, you should have only native coins on outputs if you don't emit an asset, and this is not the case. And uh, this would be not nice for uh, anonymity because we would like, as, as I said before, we would like that all that uh, uh, output pool will, would be uh, unified, and we would like that in a perfect world all the output uh, outputs uh, would have as little information about uh, the asset types as, as possible. And to overcome this we just mm, can modify a little bit this transaction by providing another input. So here we have a stake input for native coins and here we have just arbitrary input from the user's wallet for instance. It, it could be whatever whatever it possible. And after that, here we, we have um, really hidden transaction uh, uh, asset types because now external observer cannot guess which one is native coins and which one is, is not. It's very convenient. So uh, what actually we done using this? We implemented all this uh, confidential assets scheme and it's live on the mainnet since March 21st 
and Zano. We called it Zircanum hard fork. Uh, also, uh, this Zircanum hard fork introduced uh, Zircanum proof of stake. So now we have, along with uh, confidential assets, so every, everyone can emit this asset and use it. Also, we have a private proof of stake. So uh, if you stake your coins in Zano, so no external observer cannot guess how many coins do you have, and uh, so on. And yes, everyone can deploy, manage, burn uh, the asset. E and Ionic swaps now are implemented in Zano wallets. So in, as in my example, Alice and Bob could um, participate, could um, discuss this transaction and uh, actually swap assets on chain. And also, yes, I said before, we published the paper on the CL stack extension and it got reviewed by Cypher stack. So that's pretty much it. Thank you very much.